Hello ladies and gents, I am Anna Diffin, and welcome back to From the Depths, Ashes of the Empire, Community Edition. In this episode, I am going to be adding in a new force, so a third community force, and the basis of this is going to be Adnequius's designs, of which there are a fair number here. So, I'm going to try and speed through the showcase of these, essentially by showing all the similar vehicles at once. So we have three light tanks, the Floher designs. There we go, we have all three of these here. So we have slightly different armaments. We've got cannons and missiles. Similar to that one, really. And I think this one's just got a cannon, yep. So let us see how they perform against something a little bit tougher, the King Cobra. Have just rammed into each other. So not especially quick little designs for light tanks, but they are nice and cheap. So they will definitely have some use in the campaign. Though it's probably a little bit too late for them now. Doing quite well though at tearing out the King Cobra here. I'm just seeing the King Cobra is that little bit too tough for these light tanks. Though it is a little bit more expensive than all three together. That was just a small light tank, they should be quite useful, and just diverting enemy attacks is going to be good enough for the most part. Next up, we have the four main battle tanks. What's going on with this one? So it's two. Let's just actually destroy our vehicles and try spawning them in again. Something obviously went wrong when I spawned them in. Oh, it looks like that one just doesn't have a turret, so I'm just going to delete that one. I don't want to have one without the turret. Still, they have three tank designs there, so these against the King Cobra as well. It's three main battle tanks, it's considerably more powerful armaments it seems. Yep, immediately breaking through with their much larger rounds. You know, pop the turret off King Cobra there. They have rams on at the front for good measure, which will actually be very useful against the flayers, as it will allow them to repel some of the attack as the rams collide. So it's a core of three tanks for this next community force. That will be very good. Have a MLS radar. Slow, but f slow, weak, but probably a long distance design. Let's send this one against the Taipan. Yeah, a lot of missiles. Quite a, little quite a weak little design, but it will definitely be. It's more of a supporting craft. Probably not so much use in the fact that I have everything on auto detect. Having a nice little array of missiles will definitely help in the long term. Even if I do think they're all actually mostly radar seekers and things, or actual radar balloons. Next we have the MSP delay. Which will sturdy a landship type design. Very low ground with what appears to be a high rate of fire gun at the top there. Ah, it has 
fuses. I wonder if they are inertial rounds. Do we have an inertial fuse in? Mm, yep, looks like they are fused. So that should be good at defeating shields of the flares. Which is going to be very important. But speed is a little bit of a concern against the flares. But being able to actually damage the flares designs through their shield is going to be a very, very important feature. What we have up is the MT1. What a small little design. More like a tank destroyer it seems. Very sturdy internally though, lots of heavy armour. Oh yeah, definitely a ta more tank destroyer design. Slow rate of fire, but very strong projectile. Probably using a large heat round or something, I expect. Ooh, took a nasty internal explosion there though, as the explosion clipped through the side, or through the top and destroyed it. As with all tanks towards designs though, it doesn't really work solo as it is quite weak and very cheap really considering the heavy armour and that. But in a force it will actually do it a lot better due to the fact that it won't just get targeted down and destroyed instantaneously. And I expect that will happen with these next few designs as well. All quite cheap no designs, but good as more the supporting role. This is a very cheap little design. It's fast, able to avoid a lot of the shots. Of course, being a cheap little small design, if it gets hit in a crucial location, it just turns off and is disabled instantaneously. But can't expect too much of it for the cost it is. Wow, this one has a whole rear section is showing. But if it does target correctly, should be able to fire that cram cannon with quite deadly effect. Oh, and I'm shot and killed. Fantastic. Let's, resp let's restart design and try that again. I think a bit of difficulty targeting. That's probably just the AI being a bit derpy as normal. There we go. Big cram cannon and blows up. Switch with all cram. Very strong design. But weak at the rear. It's an interesting little concept. And the next tank destroyer design as well. It's a bit more conventional, it has some more armour at the rear. It's a lot lower down. A couple of cram vehicles will do extremely well in this force as it just allows that very high amount of damage to be utilised. Also be able to reutilise those helicopters with all the masses amounts of simple autocannons, the ACV-1 and the ACV-2. Because I am no longer utilising the effects mod, I don't think this will cause crashing anymore. So finally, we have the mining drone, which I think is actually... Is that actually a mining drone, or is it... Ah, let's see how it does. Very cheap little flyer. Interesting. Well, I'll have to spawn probably three of those in and see how well they do as a little air group. So you have a fairly sturdy group of tanks and then a very large group of flyers follow. 
Looking forward to this in the main campaign. Right, so have a lot of materials, so let us begin spawning in the Adnecrius Force. Right, so the force is ready to be spawned in. Just need to repair it all now. Yes. Repair all. That's going well there. Yes. Also, I would like to remove one of the vehicles which has been working really well for us, and that is the Laser Heavy Fighter. Uh, I do need to be cycling through some of the designs which have been utilised a little bit too much. And although the Laser Heavy Fighter is amazing, I unfortunately am going to have to scrap it. Yes. That's going to be in both forces. Also, how are the resources doing? Ooh, we're low on fuel. That's going to be a little bit of a problem. So in fact, let us go and build a couple more refineries. So, let's dupe, so I've duplicated all of those refineries because I do need a load more. A little while for those to get repaired because I do actually need to have the hauler nearby to replace them. Yeah. So forces blockaded. So let us begin the battle. We're not facing much up to start with, mainly because there's that absolutely huge beholder waiting in the background. So the battle begins. Immediately the target is internal detonation, losing the turret and falling down quite readily. Rare missiles and projectiles immediately destroy it. There we are, low on fuel in this force. Some projectiles will just run out. We'll definitely need to get the hauler around to resupplying everything a lot more readily. That is why I've got more refineries, because that will definitely help in that regard. Ow, I just got shot and injured. I just want to try and get to the Beholder and capture it. The main gun of the Beholder was destroyed, and that has slowed it down somewhat. So I'm now actually able to catch up with it, and hopefully I can capture it while it still has a fair amount of its resources. So, on the AI components are here, isn't it? So where's the rest of the AI in this thing? figured out where all the AI was. Uh, obviously not. But I'm being massively injured because I don't know where the AI is. Have a look through the vehicle. Ammo cache. damage. Ah, there you are! Well, I found it a little bit too late, but I did find where the AI is kept, at very least. Missed the, basically the entire battle because of that. Well, <laughs> tanks is nice and stationary. I'm doing nice and nicely there. Now, is it, are you all out of fuel? <laughs> You're all out of fuel. Whoops. That even working at all is quite impressive. I desperately need to get a the 
call it over to you to resupply you. Because yes, you just all stopped. Right, let's quickly lump on a ton of fuel storage. Hopefully you can now share that fuel with all the others. Yep, fuel has been shared with some of the other vehicles. That is good. Just need to wait for the battle to finish, which is going to take a little bit longer because everything has only just got fuel. Two damage, the battle finished. Excellent pull all. We did take some casualties there, predominantly because we ran out of fuel. Yeah. The simple jet was destroyed, as was the 220. So sorry about that. Head over to the refineries. Now it looks like I have this battle again. Let's begin. Oh, I forgot to rearrange all the vehicles. Hopefully it's all going to be okay, considering lost a couple of vehicles, and due to not having any fuel. Oh, things look like they have fuel this time. Sort of looking hits, but no real damage sustained by the flares yet. I'm bouncing off the shields and such. This one's actually doing a really rather good job. Not much of the Ashes of the Empire stuff has very good protection against actual missiles. Far cry to the vehicles in Nita, which often have incredible missile defense. Around the heavy fighter, the flying vehicles are considerably tougher to take on. Which is nice, I like the preferred bit of the challenge and basically taking more damage. Steamrolling the entire campaign, although it's fun for a short while. I find it does get quite dull. Doesn't look like it's doing too healthy. Particularly just, just took a massive hit under the belly there. Putting it up into the sky. That's too damaged. Just, everything just turns weapons against it. Oh, yeah, the plane just got destroyed, that's why. Excellent. Put all. You think it's got took a little bit of damage, but otherwise doing okay. Hmm. One thing to note: that Nexus's force doesn't actually have any repair capabilities. Could be proved to be a bit of a problem. Well, those refineries doing quite well, but it did use up all my materials to finalise them. I'm going to have to keep the hall probably quite close to the Nexus's force here. Ah, their volumes are too large. No, nope, I'm going to have to delete you then, because if you've not got the full volume... You can't really fight. That's a bit of a problem. So, scrap those designs. A bit of shame, because I did quite like those main battle tanks. Now, let us organise the force into some semblance of... An actual 
ray where it doesn't all crash and explode instantaneously, which is probably what's going to happen should I just deploy it straight away. Right, so the force seems a little bit more organized. So let's go send it into battle and see how it fares. And it might just die rather quickly, but that's all part of the fun. So then hold it down to resupply this force. They have plenty of fuel. They have plenty of fuel at the moment. But I expect I'm going to suffer quite a few casualties with this force, particularly against a 100 size force of flayers. Right, force is blockaded. I try and not fight them yet because I would like to face off with the hauler first of all. But didn't really get a chance, so. We'll be right with this fight again. Immediately a nice barrage of missiles from all the vehicles there. Immediately crash into the first of the fair's designs. Doing minimal amount of damage, but the nuke did get detonated, which is good. From kind of slamming into it, slowing the sword down a bit. What are you doing? Oh, you got flipped over. <laughs> Flower of missiles being launched down at its target. Go too damaged. Okay, so the beholder is back out. Just try and work towards the beholder again. So I now know where the AIs are. Well, I think I do. If you can capture this, this is a massive resource coup. Slowing up? It is It is slowing up, so I might be able to catch up with it now. Just take a rather huge amount of damage, it seems. Oh, darn it, I got killed. I learned that I got killed as soon as I got in it. But so that is kind of what happens. AI components. Excellent. It's now mine. It's 75k resources. Awesome. So I was not skimming on the ground, doing well. I don't want to scrap it yet in case this gets well damaged or destroyed. Also it just acts as a wonderful defense. Ooh, the escort has just got rammed there. Survived. But did take a lot of damage. A few long range missiles are still plinking away at it though. Slowing it up. It's now a stationary target, so the cannon shells should be coming towards it soon. There we go. It is too damaged. This one is a little bit too fast. It's flying to the sky. Yeah, the tank there did get rammed. It didn't take too much damage. It lost a fair bit of its front corner. Inside there, but it did push the target into the sky just makes it easy pickings for basically everything. Ooh, though this the ag did take a internal explosion there. Stay near it in case it can get some AI. You know, I keep accidentally changing the grenade into the bouncing version. So let's scrap the beholder with a colossal amount of resources. So I've been able to recover all the resources I've spent so far this episode in a single go, which is absolutely amazing. 
Anaxius's tanks and air force to deal with the 11th Airborne. Right, this is going to be a really messy battle. Lots of casualties are going to be sustained, I believe, by Necris's tanks force. Speed on a little bit, try and get the weather to change, but I think it's just going to get more and more cloudy. Yep. Let's begin. Lasers firing all over the place. Missiles galore. All being fired in completely the wrong direction. Awesome. So there's tanks swarming in, but getting pummeled by the simple ACs launching down from above. Ramming tanks not entirely sure what to do. Being fired at by simple lasers, simple auto cannons galore here. Looks like a couple of them are already dead. There's already two damage, just by taking sheer volume of fire. eating a helicopter. So I thought it was a good idea to do land next to a ramming tank, but whatever. Just seeing that slowly but surely it's are winning. Even if the casualties are pretty high. Have a the tanks there has spawned in and is just beginning to fight. The tank destroyer is picking its target, but missed unfortunately. Three mining laser drones taking on the flying target. Cash right, doesn't it? Yeah. If you like to fly, oh, it's going to ram and. Ooh, a nasty, nasty attack there. Though, as I expected, the rams have reduced the amount of damage, um, though it did still lose its turret and the majority of its internal components. But it wasn't completely annihilated, except, well, too damaged. But it did better than I thought. I'm taking significant casualties so far in this bout, though. But now it looks like it's been disabled. Let's see if we can't capture this thing. There we go. Captured. Fantastic. Sell the counteract. I'm just getting myself killed because I sold it. I was being rammed. Trying to take out the flyers. Not doing too well, though, it seems. But I guess that is the nature of these flyers themselves. Oh, did ram, though. And repair it a little bit. And that target is AI dead. Can I capture it? Nope, it disintegrates before we got anywhere near it. Oops, I accidentally retreated that one. Did not want to retreat you, I meant to repair you. 
and I wanted to do that. Jump on rather than actually retreat. So it's annoying because I've now lost one of the few vehicles I had in this force. There we go. Cataract is now mine as well. Let's scrap that. Excellent. Not by a ton of resources now. Let's go again, attack this cataract, see if we can't capture this one as well. Oh no, one of the little drones has been destroyed! They've been doing a remarkable amount of work this episode. I thought they'd just be, you know, cheap little things, but no, they've done probably the most damage out of everything. Which is surprising. There's the AI. There. So it's all that is left is the spike. So we can probably use this grunt, this cannon. Yep, I can actually fire this. It's gonna be a long battle trying to destroy this at long range. Absolutely surely though I will destroy it. Even if it is just making it run out of fuel, I will defeat this. Actually, making designs run out of fuel is quite a valid tactic in Nita, really. A lot of designs they've not been they have not been made to last extremely long lengths of time due to the way the AI doesn't have to pay for fuel or anything. It always spawns in at full material and fuel. So if you can keep them fighting for a while, you can often make them run out of resources and they'll just crash and burn. Bring up one of the engines so far here. There we go, at last the enemy is damaged and within enemy territory. That took a ridiculous length of time. The victory was assured event eventually. Let's see how well we did. So practically everything was defeated. The cataract survived. Um, but we're going to scrap you for a huge amount of resources, which is great. So I ended up this episode with a lot more resources than I started with. But I will finish the episode there. So thank you very much for watching this episode of From the Depths, Ashes of the Empire Community Edition. If you did enjoy the episode, please leave a like and or comment below, as this is always great to hear from you a lot. Also, be sure to check out my channel for other videos on From the Depths and other games. And be sure to swing by my Discord channel for more interactive chats. Otherwise, that's it for me for now, and I shall see you next time. But until then, I'm out. Goodbye!